Ever feel frustrated learning a language? Like you're trying to remember a whole bunch of stuff and you look it up and then you forget and you have to look it up again. I mean, that's the best, right? One tool you might really want to check out to have in your toolkit that can help you with that is Anki. So in this video, I'll show you how to use Anki, which is like a flashcard app, but has way more to it, which I'll show you in just a moment. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you, even if you are newer to Anki, how to jump in and get started as quickly as possible to start using it right away. And also in the most efficient and practical way to make sure to maximize your results. Hey, Genevieve here, trying to help you learn a language faster, make it more fun and help you get out into the world and use it because that's the cool part. Hey, and if you like the content, feel free to stick around and subscribe, join the fam. So why bother with Anki in the first place? Anki is a flashcard app, but it has something special about it. So Anki's magic lies in its spaced repetition. So when it comes to your memory, research has shown that in order to maximize how long you can remember something with the least amount of work is to ask your brain to recall information right when you're about to forget it, which is all well and good, but how would you know that you're going to forget something until you've already forgotten it? So this is where Anki comes in. Anki is designed to ask you for information right when you're about to forget it in order to maximize you actually remembering it for as long as possible. So let's jump in and let me show you how to use Anki. So I'll like jump into my computer and I'll see you there. Hey, by the way, I wanted to make this tutorial quick and easy so you can jump in as soon as possible and start using Anki. So with this, you can create an account, have cards, start studying, start learning, start remembering things way better. Oh, all for free, by the way, I know, right? So to use Anki, you have a couple options, but let's make it simple. There's also an app. I did a separate video on the app if you want to use it, or you can use it on a website or you can download an application. If you're the kind of person that just wants to jump in right away, as soon as possible, then you can get started with Anki Web. Now, this way you don't have to download anything, but actually the way that I prefer to use Anki and it has extra features is with the desktop version, which I'll show you now. To download the desktop version of Anki, I'll leave that link as well. Click on download, it'll bring you down. So either Mac or PC, you're set and you can read more information on the site itself. Let me show you the desktop version of Anki and how to use it because that'll give you the best user experience and it has more features. All right, first things first, let's make a deck. So I have a couple decks here as examples, but actually up here, if you see add, that's going to add a card. So come down to the bottom where it says create a deck. When do you create a deck? I usually make a new deck when it's a new topic or a theme. That could be a new language. Uh, it could be something more specific, but can separate it more. Some people do. I wouldn't go as far as to do, for example, AR verbs. You don't need to, nor should probably. So let's call it things to remember because that's the whole point of Anki. <laughs> Great, now we have a deck. So if you click on a deck, it'll take you. Congratulations, you finished your deck magical. So let's dive into a deck and add some cards. So let me quickly show you how to make a card and also the settings that I pay attention to and some that I don't. If you want to add a card, you come up here to add and it'll give you the chance to add a card. So it's like a flashcard. You're going to start off with a basic flashcard, which is a question on one side. If you actually had a physical card, question on one side, answer on the other one. So let's say... What is the meaning of life? Okay, the answer. <laughs> you didn't know you're going to get a bonus in this video too. The meaning of life is to give life meaning. Aww. <laughs> so there's your answer. Now you can get fancy with customizations. You can change the font. You can change the background. I don't really do that. You might, if you want to, you can use the highlight. Uh, you can change the color of the font to make a word stick out. Probably not in this sentence, but depending on what you need to do. But other than changing the look of a card, what I find even more powerful and useful to do is one of two things. First thing is audio. It's really powerful to add an audio component to your card if, especially if you're learning a language, but also could be with other things. If you come here to the microphone looking icon and click, 
It then starts recording, and what I'm saying right now is going to end up on my card. It then starts recording, and what I'm saying right now is going to end up on my card. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the other thing that you might find really helpful is that you can include pictures, and images, uh, graphs, things like that. If you come up here to the paperclip icon and click on it, you can add a picture. And you can add a picture as the question, or as the prompt, or the answer any way you like. Oh, and hey, a tip. You might be tempted to find the perfect image to represent the card, but I would suggest just getting something that works. It should be relatively easy to make a card. You should make it quick. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll get into some other features and some other ways that you can make cards in Anki, but let's actually first look at how to review your cards. Now that you have a card, it will ask you the question. When you click show answer, it'll give you some options below. And this is part of Anki's magic of space repetition because it is trying to determine the best time to ask you the information to make sure that you remember it. So if it was difficult to recall the information you were trying to remember, you can click hard and Anki will ask you that question more often and, and earlier versus if it were easier for you, then it'll wait a little bit longer to maximize that learning curve and long-term retention. And usually, by the way, between good or easy, I usually do good unless it was super easy and, you know, not even a question. Like before the question even finished, I already knew the answer. That's when I usually typically click on easy. And actually, Anki can end up being kind of fun in the satisfying sort of way. When you remember something that you thought you would have forgotten, yeah, then it feels like a win. For me, the process of adding cards and reviewing is not something stressful. It's just a little thing that I do that's worked into my life. Anki is a tool among other tools that I use in order to learn languages that has proven to be very useful over the years that I've been using it and definitely could be helpful for you too. And just a quick mention up here, the other things on the menu, browse if you have a card or you're looking for an answer. Sometimes I'm like, oh, how do you say that thing again? But the card's not due. If you wanna browse and find it, you can really easily. Once you've been using Anki for a little bit, it's kind of fun to look at your stats, see how much you remember over time, even time of day where you more efficiently remember things. It keeps stats on a lot of things. And sync. If you want to either use the website version of Anki and or the mobile app, then you will have to use sync to sync all your accounts together so they can stay up to date. So in addition to adding a basic card in Anki, which is question answer, you can also have the opposite way around as well. It creates two cards, and this can be especially helpful with a language if you want to go that route. If you click on here where it says type of card and you change it to basic and reversed, what you'll do, let's just make something simple for the sake of today. So you'll get two cards, the one that you went in the direction that you went, and also one in the opposite direction. So if you want to try to test your native language to the language you're learning, and then also the language you're learning to your native language, you can go both ways. Another type of card that can be especially useful in learning a language or anything really is a close card. Yes, with a Z. So if you click on close card, what that is is a sentence with one piece missing. So if you happen to want to have this type of card where you have a fill in the blank, for example, for verbs or something, if you wanna go that route, then you can take the piece that you wanna remove and have be the blank, select it, go up to these three dots here. It'll make it closed. So this is how it'll show up. It'll be the sentence with the missing piece that will show up when you flip the card. Another thing that might be really helpful to keep yourself organized is using tags. Now, if you come here on where you can edit or add a card, if you add a tag, maybe let's say this was a hard word. And later on, I want to focus on only things that are hard and are not sticking in my brain for whatever reason. You can tag it as hard or alternatively, if you're in a class and you want to organize it by chapter, instead of having separate decks, you could say chapter one, if you wanted to. You actually get to make up the names for your tags and use them how you want to. Now, you don't need to use tags. Some people love them, 
Some people don't use them. That one's up to you. Now, something that is available to you that some people really like to do on Anki is to use other people's decks. So if you want to browse a certain topic, see what other people have made, you can go to Get Shared here and it'll pop up a web page. So for example, in Spanish. Now, while you might get excited, there are a lot of decks, you never know what you're going to get. If you are going to go that route, there are ratings to say that other people have given their feedback. I do suggest, I really, really love when a deck has audio, especially good audio, and bonus points for images. So if you are interested in going that route, let's click on a deck, see what's up. It gives you a little preview, a little information. You can see what is in store. From there, you can download it and add it to your Anki. So once you download it and click on it, it'll show up in your Anki decks. So you really never know what you're going to get it with a shared deck. It is a route that some people take. I actually really prefer making your own cards because it is way more personal. You're way more likely to remember them. However, it is an option if you want to go that route. Now, there are a lot of ways to customize Anki, how the cards look, how you study the different study options, different ways to organize the information. You can do a lot of things with it. You can have a ball. It can be a very useful tool, but it also, it doesn't need to be complicated. It just could be a way to add certain cards. You choose how much you want to put into it. At the end of the day, it can be a very powerful tool. It doesn't have to be something that's overwhelming because there are lots of things that you can do with it. It can be simple. It can be just a useful thing. The important thing is to use it as a tool. You don't have to go nuts with customizing it. You don't have to go nuts with adding everything <laughs> that exists. It just can be something to help you remember the things that you otherwise wouldn't have remembered. So it's up to you. If you want to go crazy customizing Anki in different ways, if you want to mess around with the study options, you can do that. But if you're newer to Anki, I would suggest just jump in, use it. I mostly use the basic cards where just the front and the back. You don't have to go nuts with changing the font. I do really like the images and audio though, because I feel like that actually does add to your learning. But other than that, it doesn't have to be too complicated. It can just be a really useful, really powerful tool that will help you learn languages or anything else you want to learn. Hey, but what about you? Have you used Anki before? What do you think of Anki? Drop a comment below. So Anki can be a very powerful tool that you can use in your language learning toolkit, especially if you use it the right way, which stick around, subscribe for more tips on that. If you want to go crazy with it, you can customize it. If you don't, you can keep it easy and simple and just use it as a flashcard tool with some extra added benefits. Oh, and by the way, I've been using Anki for about six years and counting mainly to study and learn languages, but you can use it to learn anything. And I find that it is insanely effective. The things that I've put into Anki, I still remember it. So if you use it the right way, it can be a really powerful, useful tool to remember and learn anything that you want to. Hope you found the video useful. Like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Stick around for more tips on learning languages, Anki, all that good stuff. <laughs> um, till then, happy language learning. Catch you soon.